This is a cradled panel that I'm going to work on. I'm just going to do, I'm going to use some of this um, gold crackling, um, which it, which I got online. It's a German product. I'll put a link in the de in the description if you want to um, get some. And I'm just going to randomly put some of this on here. I've prepared the board with a, an, an undercoat. You'll just see that. I painted the back. I've left that door. And I've undercoated, a sur undercoated it with, an, with a, just a house paint undercoat. And then I've done two layers of gesso. And now I'm going to do some of this cracking. So it's, it's Just, I've just mixed a little bit of this cinnamon spice, the Lares pigment, uh, with some Liquitex, and I'm just going to paint a little bit of this on to the surface. going to drop a little bit of this alcohol ink into the crackling. Just going to let that dry. That's interesting texture, isn't it? The way it sort of moves through there. Hmm, cool. Alright, this is the next stage of this abstract piece. And all of the crackling and the ink that I bled through it has all dried. And I've walled, walled the panel with some bare, bare brand cloth tape. And I have I've mixed up some resin. I've used Mastercast. One to one resin this time because that just happens to be what I've got to use today. And I've got a range of really lovely colours because I did some, the last goddess painting I did, I did some little tiles with some leftover bits and I really loved the colour schemes in these. And I thought I'd really like to do a, like an abstract, well, sort of kind of a larger version, I guess, of these with some textural textural parts of it. So these are the colours I'm using. So it's a real sort of peachy um, gold, um, earthy sort of colour scheme. Just mixed up some clear resin, a bit more.
going to show you um, a little bit. It's the close-up of the things that I've done. It's a bit hard to see it up there. Now, I really like that. Look at that. So that was just pouring back through with clear resin. And see, it's revealing some of that crackling that I did. And it's just floating. They're like little, little islands, and they're like three-dimensional. See there? They're sitting on top. Okay, so I'm going to do, probably do another layer on this. Um, I mean, I like that background, but I don't like these these shapes in here. I'm going to work, work out of that. But um, yes, good. Okay, I've mixed up some more resin because I'm still not happy. The things that I really like is this background. So I've just left a little bit, and I'm going to, hopefully, it hasn't gone too hard yet. It's still sticky. I just sprinkled some more um, gold pigment and I've just mixed up another bit more resin. This is quite a lot of resin on here. Now I'm hoping to get that same effect where it pushes down and then creates like a, a river because this is a different thickness to what's already there. So let's hope this works. Okay. You don't find these things out unless you try it. <laughs> There's quite a bit of depth in there as well, so if you can see that, it's just really beautiful. Surface quality, great. Okay, now I finally am happy with it. Let's hope it just. All right, it's the next day, and um, everything has stayed how it was when I when I finished, which is great. Nothing has moved anymore. Now. What happened is, is that because I only put the resin and drizzled over some of the, the gold pigment, there's still gold pigment on top. So I've, um, I'm just brushing the dry bits off. So this is still not cured, so it's still, it's still very soft, so I'm not pushing too hard. Um, and I'm just, br I brushed it all off. There's still a bit left up there. As much as I could, and um, I just sort of... I just scooped it off into it all, just scooped it off all over it. And then um, what I'm going to use is some acetone and I'm going to then try and rub back. So where that dry pigment is, it actually was just sitting on the surface and it, because the resin was sort of curing, it didn't completely uh, stick to the surface. So I want to take some of that back off uh, because that will reveal those dry bits, they will reveal what was actually underneath. So, um, <coughs> let's put on some gloves. Now the reason I'm doing it now, and not when it's completely cured, is because it's be easy to get it off now. It's still a bit soft. subtle but it just might actually give me some places to work with because I want to do some very 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 fine details with um, like rose rose petals that's what I'm thinking so 
So it's got a sort of a, <clears throat> you know, a renaissance, renaissance feel about it, which is what I'm going for. So like um, Botticelli's Venus and the flowers floating, floating down around her. So that's that sort of Venus, the god of, goddess of love. So I guess I'm sort of relating to that that image in a way. Okay, I'm going to do a few, a few little tiny pools for flowers and a little bit of um, some clear resin as well. So let's hope I don't ruin it. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to start with this spot. I don't want to, to ruin these really lovely areas, so I'm just going to go on spots where I want to change it a bit. Actually, there's already a bit of white there. I'll just put tiny wee amounts because I don't want this to move much. Actually, I might do put just a tiny bit of clear resin first. Tiny hints of blue, um, and I think that these these are going to be like petals, rose petals, or bits of roses. It's sort of all tumbling down. And maybe it's Venus, she Venus, or she bloom. Not sure yet. But I must say, it's definitely has been inspired by the Renaissance and Botticelli's Venus. The gold, the golden decorative, and also Klimt. I love Klimt. It's sort of just like little jewels. So that um, that gold dust there will actually blow off because the resin underneath has is is not soft enough for that to actually stay there. But but where I put the clear resin in, that will definitely stay like that. And that will create a sense of, of depth again. Okay, well, I'm back working on my beautiful gold painting, gold and rose petal painting. Now, I've, luckily enough, it is rose season here at the moment. So, and I do have some very nice roses in my garden. So I'm just, just picking some uh, petals to, just to see how it would look. Um, just a few petals across the work and I've also got some roses here pick some roses I'm looking at different colors after some trial and error as just deciding how to approach doing the roses and the petals um, I've decided that I really just need to go with the actual shapes that are already here rather than trying to do something realistic so the rose I'm going that I've picked is really just going to be a, just a, a bit of an inspiration for the shapes of the petals and for the tones. So 
I'm going to just go with that shape that's there and actually work into that without interfering too much with the colour that's already there. So I'm going to um, change my approach now. So I'm going to use a darker colour to get the line. So I'm just going to use this, like this blob is going to be the actual rose. I finished all my rose petals, acrylic paint. They're all sitting, floating there, hopefully looking like they're floating. So my next step is to uh, mix up a small amount of resin and actually pull it over the these three-dimensional pools of resin, just with clear resin, and because I want to keep this really lovely um, relief texture that I've got going. And then I'll do the sides. I'm going to do each side one at a time, and I'm going to build up a, a layer of resin and sprinkle gold and gold pigment down the sides as well. So I have to do one each at a, one at a time. and sand. I have to sand the edges and touch them up. But I'm actually pretty pleased with that. I really like those that effect. I've just mixed up a, a, sm a small amount of resin. I'm going to resin a couple of few things at the moment. And now what I'm going to do is put some resin in a spoon and I'm going to very very carefully resin each over the top of the petals and the rose. So that's worked quite well. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put a few blobs of clear resin, so just like water droplets. Can I just show you? So I just, just did a few little blobs of clear, clear resin just to create another sense of like transparency and like little droplets of water. So they should stay in those little sphere-like sphere, sphere -like shapes. But that resin has, I don't know if you can see it, but it's actually rolled on, rolled over those edges quite really nicely. And it, it deepens the colours, you know, it always amazes me how the resin then changes the colour of the acrylic paint. Uh, I mean, look at that, I mean, that really looks like they're floating or, or dropping just about to touch the surface of the golden water. Mm. And there's like a ripple effect around it. So that part is pretty much done. Now I just need to do the sides. So I'm really 
very pleased with this this one this is a new direction for me and I'm really enjoying it just pushing resin just a little bit further okay I've just I've set the painting up to do the side as you can see I'm just that's the front of it and I've just leaned it up against a like a frame thing I've got and I've just taped around the edges of the side so that's the the profile of the painting here I've just taped it so it's level and it's and I've stuck it to the bottom so it doesn't move so that's the this is the back of the painting and I'm going to pour resin uh, gold resin and some resin gold pigment and do each side one at a time like this now of course you've got to make sure it's level okay I've got some I've just mixed up some gold bright gold it's an artisu brand I'm going to use the um, same pigment that I've used on top so I'm just going to pour this I just hope this isn't enough Okay, I've got a slight sort of motley texture, so that deeper, that darker gold is sort of coming through a little bit. And so I heated it again to make sure that the gold sinks, some of it may not sink in, and I just wiped that off. But that is going well, and it's not going down the side, which is good because that would be terrifying if it was. Well, I've finished my painting now. This is my painting titled Tears of Venus. Now, I sort of had, I was deliberating over ways of finishing this off because I wanted to put a, a protective surface over the top of some of these areas. So, I wanted to use a spray, but I couldn't get it. <laughs> so, in the end, what I did was I, I just got some resin and I actually wiped over not everything, but I wiped over some of the the areas where I was thought that maybe the gold pigment was a bit vulnerable because I hadn't burnt it into the surface. Um, anyway, it's worked out really well, and that will be protective edge surface on it. And I also wiped the resin over the sides as well. I mean, it's a bit hard to tell in this light, but it's. Um, I'll show you the other side. That it's it's beautiful and golden. Like a, it's almost like a block of gold, really. You can see how it's so the edge is gold. I just sanded those those edges there where the um, the resin was, you know, had created a bit of a sharp edge. I sanded that down, and then I just wiped the resin with a a cloth. I just wiped it over the top and over the sides, and then it has created. A lovely protective surface but this painting is changes whenever I look at it I've had it up here on the easel and it changes the light it changes the way you see it when you move around it because it is so three-dimensional so um anyway I hope you like it I'm quite pleased that's turned out quite well it's sitting on my easel in my studio I think they'll look beautiful on the wall so I'm going to do more like this some more sort of background seas like seas of texture I've got a few in mind <laughs>